Hello, this is Steve Ramona, your host for Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I want to thank our sponsors, InPhone, and with InPhone, you can place your business on everybody's cell phone, turn their business into a web app, and with a click of a button, they'll have access to you 24-7. And also Pantheon.fm. Have you ever thought about monetizing and taking your podcast to the next level? Well, Pantheon can do that. Let us show you how. Reach out to Steve Ramona, the host, at info.co slash sr1, and I will go over with you how you can make your podcast really stand out. Let's enjoy the show. Thanks again, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. This is your host, Steve Ramona, and I'm excited because I've never met a screenwriter before, and my guest is a screenwriter, and she packed up everything and moved to Mexico. I'm so envious, but also that'll teach you guys a lesson out there. If you do it and you think it, you can do it. Jacqueline, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I know he's going to start with screenwriting, but let's talk about that story real quick. You're in Canada, and what happened? Uh, well, my husband and I had an idea for a business, but the thing is like, anytime you start something, there's so much work, right. And, and, and a lot of thought processes and time and, and with the, with what it was costing for us to live, we lived near Vancouver. It was very expensive. So we would have had to both work full time just to basically live month to month, which is what we were doing. And at the end of the day, we were exhausted. Like my husband was a painter. And so he was physically exhausted, didn't really have the headspace to work on a business. Um, and so we just decided, you know what? The kids are grown. Why don't we go? Let's just like head out. We'll sell everything, move to Mexico where we can, you know, live cheap and, you know, live frugally, which we do. We don't like live lavishly here, but we, you know, we've chosen a lifestyle that will allow us to focus on building our business. How many people do that audience? I, you told me the story earlier. That's why I wanted you to bring up. I, I it, it just tells you if you do it, come together as partners and decide, just do it. Don't even think about it. You just did it and it's working for you. How long have you been in Mexico? Um, Off and on for about 10 months. We went okay. back to Canada for one month, but we've been here the rest of the time. Yeah, so that's a long period of time. You had good decision. Oh yeah. So, there <laughs> you go. There you go. Well, let's talk about screenwriting because I'm excited to learn more because I've always I'm a movie lover. So let's talk more about that. OK, well, I mean, storytelling can happen in like multiple ways, right? Around the campfire or uh, in a book, a movie, like a stage, a lot of different avenues. Uh, what I love about screenwriting is there are enough rules to keep me in line, but not so many rules that I get lost or or that I um, get stuck that I don't know, like I don't have the freedom with my story. Uh, and so I find with writing a book for me personally, like I've got some ADHD. And so writing a book is just like so many options, I get overwhelmed. But I love uh, screenwriting because I've got to write my script that's going to be able to fit within one and a half to two hours for a movie. So, you know, there's some creativity that has to go into that to make sure that it comes out that way. So um, screenwriting is something that I, I started doing in my early 20s. So it's been a couple decades and uh, and I love it. I, I honestly didn't start because I was thinking I wanted to go into it as a career. I just loved it. And it was something that was therapeutic to me. So I did it on my own just for fun. And so I figured if I'll do it without getting paid, how awesome is it going to be if I do get paid? You just did it for fun? Yeah. And here you are getting great screenwriting opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that's such a great story. I do have a question about movies, and 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 you know, I know a director. He runs the you know takes the script and you know takes what you wrote and makes it all happen. But the difference between a producer and an executive producer, I've kind of looked it up. But you know, what what is the difference there? Um, like the executive producer is more so the one that's going to gather uh, the funding and uh, and like providing for the project, whereas the producer is the one that's going to go and hire the people and uh, organize everything, you know, keep things in line. Uh, so, you know, like kind of like the executive producer sets the budget and then the producer works with it. Gotcha. 
So when I see Ryan Reynolds in a movie, he's the executive. Because so you see that a lot nowadays. Okay, actors. okay, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes what will happen is um, if there's not a budget that would afford what that actor is worth, they'll take some money up front and then they'll take a credit. Because then what happens is on the back end when it's making money, then they make money there instead of up front. So there's that too. Oh, so they get a piece of it. Say, we can't pay you ten million dollars. We'll give you, yeah. for example, a million, but hope this is a blockbuster, and you'll get a piece of the the pie that keeps coming in all the time as it's being yeah. played. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. I've been wanting to answer for ten years. This is the best show I've ever done already. <laughs> <laughs> so, screenwriting. Do you do large movies, small movies? Um, is a choice. Because, yeah, like okay. So my favorite is feature length films. So okay. I write a lot of those, and so I write them on spec most of the time sometimes I'm hired to write them but most of the time I write them on spec which means I write it because I choose to and then I have to find a producer to produce it um which usually comes down to pitching which I told you before <laughs> I haven't had to pitch so I'm thankful uh, but the other I do also work um I have a, a sitcom that I've been a writer on which that was so much fun oh man working as a team and then also comedy I love crazy comedy it was, yeah, ton of fun. Are there shows we could talk about? If not, that's okay. But uh, not at the moment. I can yeah, tell but... you um, the the features. There's a couple features I can talk about. There's one called Solitary Refinement. That one's based on a true story. It's actually based on a time in my life when I was a single parent and I was working in a prison. Wow, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one that just got uh, optioned last week is uh, called Flashback Jane. So you can go on Facebook. We have pages if anybody wants to follow our right. progress. Yeah. yeah. So we'll put that in the show notes as well. Um, so when you, I mean, I hear this a, once in a while, you know, you do, there's a movie and then it gets cut or whatever the words they use. How often does that really happen? I mean, is there like 10 million scripts out there and one's taken? Is it like a real hard industry to mm -hmm. dive into or get into? Uh Okay, well, yes and no. It really, it does a lot of the time come down to who you know, not because who you know is how you're going to somehow get ahead. Uh, you still have to know what you're doing. So you still have to develop yourself as a writer. But once you've developed yourself, you got to get to know people because you need to build a reputation so that people will want to come to you. And that's why I said, like, I haven't had to pitch because as I was getting to know people and I was just putting myself out there saying like, hey, I'm happy to, to you know, help you on something. And so I've actually done some actor demo reels. Like I've written a demo for them so that they can go and produce that so that they can show their acting skills. So then I asked them like a list of questions like, okay, what kind of emotion do you want to, to show? Like, so that way I can showcase like, what are they really good at? So that they can put that out there. And then yeah. they put that at festivals and you know, yeah. and other projects people send to me and say, yo, I want to tighten up the dialogue because they heard I'm good at dialogue or something like that. So yeah, that's how projects get sent to me. So it sounds like the screenwriting is kind of your passion. You'll do a few movies, but this other stuff, the demo reels and the dialogue, somebody's out there, an aspiring actor, they can reach out to you and have a, have them, oh, yeah. you write a demo reel. That's, oh, that's very cool. So you got a lot of spokes in the wheel. I do. I do. I feel like my life revolves around screenwriting now. I mean, when yeah. I had my kids, when I was raising them, screenwriting, I definitely fit it in because it was something I was building toward. But I had decided at a very young age, because I'm an all in person, if you haven't already caught on, um, I yeah. decided I wanted to have kids and I wanted a career, but not at the same time. Yeah. yeah so no, that, I, that's yeah, funny. I continued to grow my skill as I was raising my kids, but I didn't dive into the industry head on until after they were finished uh, high school. My youngest was 19. Mm -hmm. And then the next month, my husband and I launched our business, Family Friendly Screenwriting Academy. So when you do a, a screen screenwriting and the movie gets started with the producer and, the, and everything's going, do you go to the to the um, location and work with the actors and producers? Or are you once you're done with it, you're you're done? It depends. Okay. So for, for movies, yeah, when you're done, like you, the producer buys it, your job's done. It's over. 
you know, and unless you have an arrangement with the producer and you're like, oh, I want to be on set, I want to help. And, and if they're okay with that, then, you know, maybe like with indie films that might be more common. Yeah. Um, but uh, with television, they want to have writers on there because they have the entire series or the entire um, season to consider if they need to do any kind of rewrites, they need to have the writer on set to adjust things, knowing what other episodes might have to also be adjusted in order to, you know, make that all work. So if it's for um, episodic television, there's going to be a writer on set, but if it's a movie, nope. <laughs> and you do TV and movies. It sounds like you do both. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you like better? I know that's a tie, a tough question. Oh yeah, it is a tough one. Well, I really do like features because I really like to have enough time to dive into the story, but then also I like the conclusion aspect. You know, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Two hours, two and a half done. Okay, yeah. move on with the story. Um, how long does it take to write a screen? A screen? What's it called when you uh, a, a, write a movie, to movie or, or TV show? How yeah. long does it take? Uh, a feature screenplay. Feature screenplay. So, yeah. So for me, it, it there's two stages. There's the vision stage, and then there's the writing stage. So the vision stage it's all over the place. You might have an idea that takes a long time to develop, to develop, to understand your vision well enough to be able to sit down and write it. Um, I do have a process that I've developed in order to help with that process. Um, and I've been using that with my students. I actually came up with it because um, I was trying to teach the processes that were already out there to my students and they were just so confused. And I thought, oh, how can I make this simpler for them? So I came up with this process that I thought is really simple in order to uh, develop those important points within the story, but in a way that connects them so that they're actually meaningful when they happen. And it's not just, oh, this happens here. Oh, I need something that's going to be intense here. And I need something that's funny here. And no, we need to connect all of that to make it a cohesive story. So I came up with this process and my students loved it. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to write a book about the process. Nice. That might be a while. I don't know when I'm going to have time. Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> and you read my mind. I was going to ask you about a book. Is that you definitely should write a book? I, and I didn't. I knew there wasn't. It's different for every project. I'm sure the time. But thank you for going through the process. It, it, it taught me something. How you the vision and then write from the vision. Um, let's talk about family friendly screenwriting academy. You're mm -hmm. taking on students and you're teaching them how to write screenplays. Yes, actually, we have, we have a few different um, approaches, like we've even got a peer review festival. So for people who are already screenwriters, they can submit their script. And then in the process of the festival, they're going to read and review other scripts and get reviews for their script. So everybody is able to get feedback hmm. on their own script. And I the reason why we um, that was actually how the whole thing started was because I thought to myself when I started working with another writer, which is that networking thing I had mentioned earlier, like that's where it all started. Um, when I met another writer that she and I were at about the same level, like we had scripts in competitions and like in one competition I'd win and in another one she'd win. So like they were neck and neck. Uh, but we started sending scripts back and forth to each other. And I started saving so much money because I didn't have to send it to like uh, a professional script consultant until I had it to the point where I was like, okay, this is the best that I can take it between me and her combined. And then I saved that much money, right? And I thought, what if we could do this on a bigger scale for more people? And so we started this peer review festival program. And so we, we're uh, just starting our third season now. And uh, yeah, it's going well. Like we're getting a lot of great feedback from the writers that, you know, it helped them with going into the next draft. And a lot of the time when you put a screenplay into a festival, it's like you want it to be at its best. You know, you don't want to put it in if you're like, well, I know something's not working in the second act or whatever. But this is different because this isn't about being the best. This is about gleaning from each other. You give because you're going to you're going to give feedback on the scripts that you read. And then you're also going to receive feedback on your own. So everybody's growing together. There's like, what is that saying about like a, a, a boat and the water's rising? <laughs> yeah, boats. Yeah, I, I forgot it too, but I know all boats together, rise with together. the ship or whatever. But I yeah, think yeah. the audience, they get that. You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah, Jacqueline, that's awesome. So there's no fear coming in. It's like, 
here's my screenplay. Hey, Steve, you need to do this, this, and this to tweak that, whatever you verbiage you use. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you guys give me the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so for example, um, one of my favorite feedback last time was on mine, because I put my scripts in there too. Um, and we have different levels, like for, for people that are beginners, they're going to review each other's and then people that are intermediate, maybe they've won awards, but they're not professionals yet. And then we also have the professionals. So, you know, professionals aren't going to put their stuff in there and have it reviewed by beginners. Like they'll get the value out of it because it'll be reviewed by people at the same level. Yeah. Um, but so on my feedback, what I loved was that there was somebody that had the insight to tell me that what was, what was throwing everything off was the first 20 pages. There was stuff that I was missing in there. And if I fixed that, all the rest worked. And so I did that and it totally worked. So, <laughs> but like without that, I, cause I knew I was lost. I was like, something is not working. I know it's a good idea. I know I'm going somewhere good, but I just don't know why it's not working. And so I put it in the festival and I found out why. So it's like the, the old phrase, another set of eyeballs looking at is what you're talking exactly. about to get a, a, an outside perspective. Oh, God, I, I'm loving this. And I almost forgot we got to do a shout out because I know somebody's listening going, I want to write a screen. I want to be an actor or I'm a producer. How can they find you? Okay. Familyfriendlyscreenwriting.com. That's our website. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Twitter, and actually on YouTube, I recently started doing a series of shorts that is actually um, screenwriting for authors. Because I know there's a lot of authors that want to turn their book into a screenplay. And so uh, it's just like one minute tips, like these are important things to know in this process. So sometimes it's about writing itself. Sometimes it's about the industry and like understanding what your options are, what the path is and what goes with that. Um, so yeah, if anybody is an author and they're thinking like, oh yeah, I want my book to be a movie and I'm, I don't even know where to begin. Well, here we go. <laughs> and okay. actually with that, we are offering a mentorship program that starts in the fall. So, for authors? Yeah. For that one is specifically for published authors, because what we're, we've done is create a mentorship program. Like I said, I'm all in, right? So I actually have like a team of people that we can work together to build up these authors in the process of them writing their own screenplay so that they get to maintain full credit when it goes into production. A lot of authors listen to this show. So you just opened some doors here. Thank you for mentioning that. And I've got authors I need to connect you with. I'm going to do something. I'm pretty fired up. We just met today, but you've inspired me. So what I'm going to do is the first four listeners that reach out to you and mention the podcast, my name or the name of the podcast doesn't matter, but you know, it's, they came from here. I'm going to send them a $20 Amazon gift card on me. All right. So that way I want people to reach out to you because I hear people all the time. Hey, I want to do this, this, and you, you make that barrier of getting in so easy, right? Well, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the thing is that we're actually taking the mystery out of it because Hollywood has kind of been this industry where it's all been mysterious. And you ask somebody, how do you pitch? They won't even give you a straight answer. You know, that's part of why I never pitched was I, I don't even know how to do it, but I know who does now. And so we're actually going to be um, putting together a pitch festival to teach people how to pitch and then gathering industry people like producers and acquisitionists to come together so that they can be pitched to. And what we want to do is create an environment of excellence so that when people come to see, okay, they're going to be pitching to me, they're prepared pitches. They're not going to waste your time. And people out there, her information is going to be in the show notes. It'll be sitting on all the platforms, including YouTube. When this launches, reach out to her because I'm kind of thinking about being a screenwriter myself. Cause I, you see, that's what I love. I, I love it. Simple. It's hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but you start with the basics. You're going to ride the bike. You do the training wheels, take them off. Kind of what you're doing. I love that. Because I talk to people all the time. I'd love to do a screenplay. I don't know. Now I've got the option to go to. The other thing that really, a question that comes to my head, do you, like an actor can reach out to you and say, I've got a screenplay I want you to, to write for me or an idea, a producer or any person? Right. Person. Um, okay. Yes, there. There's that. And also we're in the process of building um, uh, a list of writers who would be available for hire also. 
Uh, but for me personally, yes, I am available for hire. Um, I just actually this week got hired to uh, do some script polishing on three scripts. It's part of an episodic um, this is a historical fiction. Uh, but it's really cool because in that project, it's uh, it's originally set in the Middle East and somebody translated it into English. And so my job is to go and basically clean it up and uh, fix the English. And, and I think also whoever had translated it, their background was more in theater than in film. And so I don't have to do any of the structuring or plotting or character development. I just go in there and format it and, uh, you know, make it look like a screenplay. Polish it like a rock. You polish it like polish a rock. Yeah, I fixed some of the some of the dialogue in English um, when it translated, you know, was yeah. it needed a little bit, but um, yeah, it, I didn't have to do any of the the other stuff. Well, like I mentioned, the vision part of it. That's the part where sometimes I get a screenplay and it's like, okay, I have to actually go back to and I have to assess why is this not working? And then what do I need to do to make it work? And then I have to do that. I didn't have to do that this time. So, you know, I get a variety of projects and uh, I don't know, I like them all. No, and I'm glad you said, because I know people have visions of somebody listening might go, I got mm -hmm. a vision for a book. I was, this, you know, whatever that is. So yeah. that's half your work is done for you. You go, hey, Jacqueline, I got this vision. I want to live on Mars and forever, you know, whatever that is. You yeah, could take yeah. that and put it on paper and and and, and polish it in a sense, make right. it yeah. words. Yeah, um, and if, and if I can't, I can recommend someone who can. You just read my mind. I was going to say you probably have resources, which are vital. Uh -huh. That's important. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to forget this. So this is really important. You're a couple working together. So let's not forget. He's your husband, right? Yes. What does he do for the company? Does he screenwrite as well? Or is he like oh. the back back end? Yeah, he makes it all happen like on the website nice. and the, the business side of things. Um, I'm kind of more so because I am the screenwriter, I'm the one that's kind of the, the personality and I teach the classes, develop curriculum, hire the writers that are going to come and teach master classes and stuff like that. But he manages all of the other stuff, like which is great because I am not a business person. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So I wouldn't be able to do it without him. Yeah. What's his name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, shout out to you because you've got, that's awesome because you figured out a way we can help each other. He's good at this. You're good at this. Put our fingers together and you've got a great partnership. Yeah. Um, and and thankfully, he's also the type of person that would sell everything and move to Mexico. There, to there you that. go. That Again, kudos to you, Jeffrey. That's fantastic. Couples out there trying to start a business. Listen to what Jacqueline said. Uh, we've run out of time. I could talk to you more. Can I ask a favor? Can you come back? I think there's more we need to cover. Absolutely. Okay, that would be fantastic. We'll have you back in a month or so. I know listeners are going to reach out to me and want to know, when's the next one with Jacqueline? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get it out to you so you know what it is. And thank you for being on. You are a blessing, what you're oh. doing and how you do it with your heart. Thank you so much. It's so appreciated. Um, I get one more favor. Mm -hmm. Can you help my audience with a tip or some idea that's helped you through your journey? Besides moving yeah. from Canada to Mexico, that's a tip right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I really think that, okay, if you're climbing up a ladder to go to a high diving board, right? As you're climbing, that's where you're questioning. Can I do this? Can, you know, am I going to be able to make it? And then you're thinking of the the strategy that you're going to need to be able to do it. And so you're, you're weighing your options, right? As you're climbing that ladder and as you walk out to the board, that's where you're making your final decision. Okay. Once you jump, your decision is over, right? You are all in, there is no turning back. There is no, I've changed my mind. Like you are in. And so if you approach business that way, where you make sure that when you jump, you're ready to jump, you've got everything as much as you can lined up. Uh, but once you jump, like you can't, you can't change your mind and turn back and be like, oh, we can't do this anymore. Like, so, I mean, when we sold everything and moved, if we decided a month later, later, like, oops, <laughs> that would have been a disaster to try to go back to Canada and buy all of our furniture again. And like, there's just no way. And so we spent probably six months, right? The first three months we were deciding whether or not we were actually going to do it. And then three months preparing to make it happen. And, but then 
once we did it, I mean, once we sold everything, handed the keys back to the landlord, like it was done. So I would just encourage people, yeah, be all in.